Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. This is our Foundry VTT series where we are looking at creating the Dungeons and Dragons module Stormwreck Isle in Foundry VTT version 11. And we're not using any add ons, not yet anyway. We're getting to the point where that will become uh, really useful to do. But for now, um, we're finishing off the last couple of bits. So in the last video, we created Dragon's Rest, uh, which was the main um, the main village here where they come in. If you recall, we've just put this together in one session. It was qu actually quite quick um, and doing them not on video would be even quicker. So it took it took about uh, 50 minutes. I think the last video was to do everything on here. That would be much, much faster without it. What we want to do in this video is we want to um, check our maps from a player point of view. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a player uh, uh, and a character for that player. Uh, and then we're going to try and log in as that player and see what they can see. We want to test some of those walls and lightings and of course that volume that we had in Seagrow Caves in particular, but a couple of other areas as well to make sure it's not too extraordinarily loud or so quiet that it's not worth having. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, if I go to my Actors tab, uh, we created a folder for players, and in here I've got my test character. Um, that's not for a player, that was just a test character. So the first thing we want to do is create a character for us. Now we can either go to add here, add a new player character, and we can create them from scratch, bring in all our stats, type them all in, etc. Totally doable. Um, we haven't necessarily got access to all of the feats and things directly through the SRD, so that's the the free to use, um, uh, you know, uh, beginner's guide. So um, there are other ways, and there's a really good add-on that helps you just suck your character directly over from D&D Beyond. That will be one of the first add-ons we look at, but we're not doing it yet. So um, we instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our compendium packs, go to our SRD content, and here we've got Starter Heroes. So if I click on Starter Heroes, here they all are on the left-hand side, and I can just dump any one of these that I want to. Um, I want to make sure I'm dumping them into my player folder. So uh, let's pick Randall. And we can dump Randall over there. I can now close the SRD folder and I can see I've got Randall over here. If I double left click, here's all of his stats. Uh, and this one's already set up with all of his equipment features, everything he needs to go, which is fantastic. And if you're using brand new players who don't really know what they're doing yet, um, these are a good idea. It's like, let's just get on and play. Here's somebody and then they will decide whether they like a fighter, they don't like a fighter, etc. But it gets them going without bogging them down in a very large session zero to create characters from scratch. Okay, so first of all, we've got the character for a player to play, but we don't have a player yet. So what we need to do, we, um, before we can invite anybody to join our game, is we need to create a player. So top right, going to game settings. And one of the things here, of course, we have is user management. So if I click on this, you can see this is going to bring up a list of all of our users that we've got for this game world with the ability to reset their passwords and what role they have. So I don't want to have my password on here at the moment just for ease of what we're doing. So I'm going to take that out, but I am going to create additional user. And by clicking this, you can straight away see that this has created a new user. I'm going to give it the name of the player. I could choose to set a default password for them, and I'm going to choose their role. So we've got no role, a player, a trusted player, assistant game master, or the game master. Now, under this configure permissions button, there's lots of different things that we can set for what each player role, sorry, which each role um, can and can't do. For example, broadcasting audio, we don't want our players doing that, but I could choose to turn it on. So trusted player, we might say that they're allowed to, assistant game masters and game masters are. So there's a whole range of different things here that you can choose to set. Um, you know, if you've got somebody who's supporting you, you want them to do a bit of admin, maybe somebody is helping with the sounds in the background, um, or you know some of that admin stuff, you might want to do that. Personally, I wouldn't want to use somebody doing that admin because for them, it's breaking their game immersion. So I would like my players to be just focusing on playing the game. So I've created Bob, he's gonna be a player. I'm gonna click save and return. It's gonna ask me to log in. 
and I can log in as the Game Master or I can log in as Bob. For this, I'm going to log in as the Game Master. And come back into here. So I'm back in my map. Okay. Now I'm the only one that's actually in here now, but we know that we've got another player who can join. If I go back to my actors and double right click, uh, sorry, right click, I can configure ownership. So in this box here, it's asking who can control this character. So this very specific one. And you'll notice we've now got a player named Bob is up here. So all players by default, none of them can activate and play with this. I could choose to make this somebody that every player owns and can control that token. But I've got Bob and I only want Bob to be the owner of this character and this token so I'm going to save changes that character now belongs to the player Bob so Bob's not even logged in yet we've already allocated his character to him okay so um, one thing to bear in mind of course is you potentially could allocate a whole series of characters so if Bob had a familiar I could also allocate ownership of the familiar to the player Bob so that Bob's got his character but can also control the familiar what I might want to do as a game master is say, oh no, you don't get to control your familiar. You can ask it to do stuff, but it's an independent creature. It will do what it do what it wants to do. Um, and that might go for intelligent mounts and, and pets and all sorts of other things, not just familiars. All right, so we have, uh, we have Randall in who we're going to assign to Bob. Next thing we need to do is to make sure Bob can actually join our game. So going up to our game settings, we have a under game access we have invitation links so this is going to give us two things first of all it's going to give us the um, the local network address so for people in normally within our building but on our current network what their link is in order to join this game now i'm going to be using a different browser even though it's on the same machine um, and so i'm going to be using that link to connect in and pretend that i'm bob as well as so i'm going to have my game master on one screen and i'm going to have bob the player on another screen so we can see exactly what bob you can and can't do now this internet one, the chances are you won't be trying to use Foundry to play a game if all of your, and you might do, but if all your uh, your players are coming to your house, so there's a good chance that they'll be connecting via the internet. Um, it's hidden by default because uh, we don't want to share that kind of information, but you can set up, it's a little bit technical, there are plenty of videos out there that take you through that specifics of how to do that, but you need to do some port forwarding and things like that. So essentially, the address that your computer sits on normally changes um, quite regularly because it's part of keeping your computer safe. But what you can do is create a static IP um, and using port forwarding to say, actually, anybody comes to this particular address, it will send them directly to Foundry VTT when the game is running and therefore they can join. So like I say, that's a bit technical, but under there is a different link for people trying to join externally. Um, and that's the one that your external players will join. Now, a good way to test that when you've got that set up is you can sit there with your mobile phone, turn your Wi-Fi off so that you're not connecting by your local network. Put in that address. You can just click on this eye icon and it will show you what that address is. Type that into your browser bar and it should connect. Now you can see it's saying, it's got, I've got green arrow here, it appears to be open, uh, mine should work. And indeed I have done that and I've used my mobile phone just on data, no Wi-Fi, to make sure I can connect to the game. I know I can do that. Um, that's my first test. Next test will be to get a, one of my actual players just to check they can log in. But I wanna make sure my game is ready first. So that techie bit out of the way, I'm going to copy this Okay, and then in a completely separate browser window, I'm going to just paste that directly into here. And because I am actually am on the same computer, it's very, very quick. It's not having to go via the internet, even though it thinks it is. Um, here I am, I can join a game session. So here's my link. And I can select one of these roles. Now, I can't select the Game Master because the Game Master's already logged in. Um, if I was, if I had multiple players, obviously I'd want to pick 
my name and this is where passwords might come in handy you don't want some players coming in logging in pretending to be each other um, could cause all sorts of problems messing with characters and stuff we've only got Bob so we're gonna log in as Bob and I didn't put a password on it so I can join that game session now let's just make this a bit bigger so as we can see, well now Bob is logged in, and this is Bob we're looking at. All right, this is Bob the player's view. They can't see anything in the background at the moment, but the very first thing it's doing is saying, hey, look, would you like to change your picture? So this is your player picture, not your character picture. Would you like to select a color? Would you like to put in pronouns? Now, I'm, I'm not worried about the player avatar picture. Um, it's more about the characters for me, so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to leave that blank. But here, all of the characters that have been allocated to Bob appear in a list. We only allocated Randall. Uh, so Bob can pick which of those characters he wants to play. So he's going to play Randall, save configuration. Okay, so now Bob is in the game. Um, and by looking on actors, he can see himself. He can left click, he can see his character, he can... Uh, click on various things to make dice rolls, whatever he needs to do, um, and he can edit his character, etc. So that's all there, which is great. He's ready to go, but he can't see any scenes yet. Also note, just down here in the middle of the screen towards the bottom, it says the game is paused. And that's because the Dungeon Master's not allowing the game to run at the moment. Uh, players can't unpause it, but what it means is characters can't be running all over the screen and doing shopping and whatever it is that they want to do while the game is paused. That's a really good thing because the DM might have some story bits to talk about. Uh, the top left here, we can see that we've got two places we can navigate to. Dragon's Rest or Stormwreck Isle. So if you recall, when we were setting up um, each of our scenes, we could talk about the navigation and who could see what. So we restricted some of those other areas so the players can only jump to Dragon's Rest or to Stormwreck Isle. Um, so on Stormwreck Isle, what can the players see? Nothing at all except Dragon's Rest, the village, because that's going to be where they start. Um, that's where they're heading to right at the beginning of the adventure. I have no problem. These other places, we know the observatory is down here, the shipwrecks up here. Until they hear about them as part of the game, they're going to remain hidden. Now, when we go to Dragon's Rest, it's telling us that it says up here, you do not own any token with vision in this scene because we've got vision on there and the dungeon master has not put that person on. So first of all, what we're going to do is look at this map. Are we happy that what the player can see here is correct? So for, can I double click on this? I can. It gives me the map of Dragon's Rest, which we were happy to share at first. Uh, not any details. Obviously, it's just the map. Um, and any description we want of Dragon's Rest to kind of set the scene. So at any time, the player can come back to this scene if they want to, um, and they can read that journal and have a look at that. Now, one thing to check, top right here, when we go to journal, we've got introduction and we've got Dragon's Rest. So even if they're on a different scene, they can come here and jump in and have a look if they want to, which is really useful. Uh, we want them to be able to do that. They can also access the chat here, um, and they can say, oops, hello DM, and pop that in the chat, and you'll notice it comes up with their name. Now, obviously, you want to have voice conversation for this, whether you're using that through Discord or, or whatever you're going to do. Now, I do know through Foundry, you absolutely can have voice chat and video chat. Um, again, that's one of those really technical things to get set up especially if you're hosting yourself and it's all to do with security around access to microphones and video cameras. So that's quite technical, quite challenging. Most people I know who are using Foundry are actually using voice chat from something else like Discord um, or Google Meets or something like that to have their verbal conversations just so they don't have to worry about the technical aspect of getting Foundry working. So that aside, um, I don't need to worry about that at the moment because I'm talking to myself, which would be quite, quite silly. All right, so I've got my combat over here, no encounters. I've got actors and everything else. So let's pop back to, uh, let's just stick that over there at the moment. So this is back on the DM screen. Uh, and this is where we can make some changes and things like that. So 
we know the wreck of the compass rose is here one of the things i want to be able to potentially do is to show the players um, this location later on so if i go to my journals i can find my um, wreck of the ship of the compass rose i can right click configure ownership now at the moment this journal entry is none for all players by default and bob has default on that so this they can't see this what I could do is change that to observer and when I click save changes if I bring back Bob's view over here Bob can now see the wreck of the compass rose so once they've got that clue from dragon's rest he can now see that and double click it and read any information I want on there so that's that's how we can control those journals make sure that the players only see what we want when we want to see. So that's one of the things we want to test. So I'm going to configure ownership and say none again. Hide that from Bob for now. Okay, so let's say the first thing they're going to do is to go to the wreck of the compass rose. As the DM, what I want to do is come up to the compass rose and I'm going to activate this. So this is going to bring in, and we can hear lapping water in the background. Yeah, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, and we can see, as the DM, we can see this. Now, if we bring over just from the side here and we bring Bob back, Bob can't see anything. You'll notice this has appeared in his navigation now. It's the active scene. Uh, there's a reason Bob can't see anything, and that's because he doesn't have that token on the map. So back over here, what we need to do as the DM is go to our actors and we find our player and say, oh, well, hang on a minute, where is Randall? And let's pop him with his character onto the deck there okay so that is the player's token for them to move around so in theory let's hope that works we should be able to let's pop back to bob over here and uh, bob can now see what his character can see so remember we did put some walls up we can't see a whole bunch of stuff um bob can now the game is paused bob can't move his token because the game is paused remember i said the DM has to pause that. Um, but we can do things like select targets, we can measure distances, we should be able to do that. Just check how far things are, we can do that as the player. Um, journal notes. Now that's interesting, Bob can see this journal note. Can't do anything with it, but he can see it. So that's something we'll need to fix in the DM one. So let's go back to the DM screen. Let's check why Bob can see this journal note. Why is it not letting me click on this at the moment? Oh, because I need to go to journal notes, is it? Oh, there we go. Right. So we've not got it globally visible. But I would think we shouldn't be able to see that, but we can. Okay, so what we're going to do... Um, so this is C1. We just put. But I think the easiest way to do this is we're going to delete this. We're going to create a new one called... C1 and we want to create a corresponding journal entry. Now the reason we do that is when I create this map note, I don't need to, so I could put all of the description in from the module, I don't need to. But once I've created this, again I can change any of these things if I want to. But because it's now a journal entry, if I go to C1 up here, I can configure ownership and decide who can see that. Now because this is a module entry, um, piece I don't want the players to be able to see that so I need to change that um, as you can see by default all players none and Bob is going to follow the default none so we've managed to hide that one just by doing that little tweak there we bring Bob over we can now see that that has disappeared okay so again this is why we're testing it we're just trying to get rid of some of those little quirky bits like that. So one of the things I know I need to do is to go through and change all those. I suspect if I, as the DM, I can move Bob, even though it's paused. I suspect, I'm just looking on the screen, Bob can see that one. He can see that one as well. Okay, so I will need to fix that for Bob. Not a problem. So we can see this other character, my test person on here, no problem. So what I'm going to do as the DM, I will go through and change all of those later. 
It's not going to make you watch me do that. It's actually really, really boring. But I'm going to press space bar and you'll see that this pause down here has now disappeared. So let's go back to Bob. Good old Bob over here. And now the game is unpaused by the DM. Bob can indeed move around and explore. Close the doors. Close the door. He can walk in. He can see what's going on in these places. Looks amazing. I can walk through a wall. We can close doors. Come down here and investigate this one. Have a look into this room. over here, open this door and immediately see there's a zombie there. Alright, so that's all that's all working. Bob's sight appears to be working quite well. Um, Bob might go up these stairs here which is gonna immediately put him over here. But he can't do that because of the wall. So that's interesting. Bob can't move himself from one level to another. Let's pop back to the DM screen and just make sure the DM has the power to do that. We can teleport Bob from one area to another. Brilliant. And then on Bob's screen, we just saw him drift across from over there to over here. What you'll notice is this is now in fog of war. So everything that Bob saw, he can still see greyed out, but he can't see the creatures and the monsters. He can't see our test character that are standing here. He can't see that zone. So that's what we want. Again, we've got these... Uh, DM notes that we need to be able to see. Okay. Now on Bob's screen, I'm listening, I can hear the Latin waves and things, I can hear those seagulls. That doesn't sound too loud to me for this. It sounds alright. Um, I could buy it down a little bit. So Bob can move around here wherever he likes. Uh, obviously, if he moves down to that deck, really we want to teleport him over there, but it's not going to allow him. Um, so what we could do is we could play with walls to make sure the player can move around from place to place if we wanted to. Um, I think the only issue with that is then they potentially are just wandering all over the place while the DM's losing track. Of course, any time the DM can just swipe the space bar and pause it. Right, everybody stop moving. You're driving me nuts. <laughs> and now the characters are locked. And that's a really good thing to do perhaps at the beginning of combat. It's like, right, everyone stop moving, we're now into combat. It's going to be combat moves only. Just to get everybody to refocus. Uh, especially if they're running around town or something. Okay, so uh, let's move let's move Bob down to um, just down to here. We want to check how the light all works in the lower deck. So if you slap Bob down here, unpause it again, bring Bob back over. Uh, we've got this lighting from and we can see there's a zombie here and we can wander around down here investigate everywhere without too much drama and if you remember you can't go through there because there was a wall we can come around the back here now you notice Pog's only got this little radius around him for his light in a dim area of course if a little torch we would want him to be able to see a lot more now we know at the DM that we put a ghoul here because it's hidden Bob can't see it which is exactly what we want um, we're trying to make him walk through walls doesn't like it which is good that's what we want and we shouldn't be able to move him over to the hole okay so quickly again let's just pop back to our DM move Bob over there there we go and now Bob is in this hole again we're underwater with lighting is poor we can't see very much we can move Bob around wherever we like as he travels through the ship and we can not go through any walls which is exactly right so he can't swim out there for example but he should be able to swim out this bit if he wants to swim. okay so that's that's all working as we would want it to I don't have any problem with that let's go back to the DM screen um, now remember every scene is potentially going to have the player character token on it. So when we leave a scene like this, when Bob comes back to join this, I want to make sure that this is uh, where Bob starts um, on here. Um, what I could do is just chuck him off into the middle of the sea with the other tokens so that I can work out exactly where they're going to start. Or I could just dump them on, because all I need to do is go over here and go, oh yeah, Randall, you're there. That's all I need to do. Yes, I've got two copies. Yes, 
player can control both copies. So I want to make sure I've only got one. But that is working. Now because that player has already wandered around there, if I wanted to, I can reset their fog of war for them. Which means if I just pop back over to Bob, all of that lot, even though he explored it once, is now good it down. Okay, so we can only see what he needs to see. Alright, so let's move on to the next scene. Okay, so moving to the next scene, let's uh, let's go to and activate Dragon's Rest. Okay, so here we are, the white map we created in the last session. Now again, quickly just showing you, uh, Bob can't see anything because we haven't got his token on. So what we're going to do is just drop his token down here and suddenly Bob da -da, has vision. All right, so here you are, Bob. And now you can explore. So remember we put those walls in to reduce their ability to see into things up above but we're still on pause so Bob can now move around explore these things um, wherever he wishes to just have a bit of a nosy can't walk through walls Bob walk all the way past here you can see all the way up this path as he heads up towards the top you can see the two figures up here but it's not until he gets to the top here that he can then see this cliff top path and walking along here, he gets a glance into those buildings, up the steps, and then along the top of the cliff and into the temple. So all of that is working as we wanted to. Haha, <laughs> see Bob can't shortcut all the way down there. Um, he's not allowed to do that, which is good. We don't want him to be able to just jump there. He's going to have to actually use movement to, to move that way. Uh, the DM, of course, back over here, uh, can just chuck him wherever they want. Now the only problem with doing that of course is Bob then gets to see everything that his character passes by. Um, so you need to be a little bit careful as a DM where you're dragging stuff because you don't want Bob seeing secrets and things he's not supposed to. On this map it doesn't matter. By the time he's got up the top there he's seen everything there is to see. Okay so we're happy here. One thing we haven't got is we haven't got any crashing wave sounds here so we might put in a very quiet one here. Um, and the other thing to check, of course, was the same as we had in the other one. Bob can see this um, path of monastic cells. Um, let's just check. I suspect he can see all of the others as well, can't he? As he drags his way over here. I think some of them I might have put outside of walls anyway. Yeah, no, he can see the winch house. Can't see the kitchen one. Oh yeah, Bob, come on, you can't go through walls, mate. Uh, yeah, so we need to do the same and hide all of those. Okay, so that's that's absolutely fine. So we slide Bob over there. We know how to fix that. That's not a big drama at all. Uh, let's reset Bob down here. All right, so the next one we want to look at is let's check out the Seagrove Caves. We spent quite a lot of time doing Seagrove. Uh, Seagrow rather so I'm hoping this one is going to to look really good so um, I can see already on the other screen we haven't put Bob's icon on here so we can't see anything so let's start off by chucking Bob on this uh, this path here okay so we're still not paused so look back over here Bob please uh, this is what Bob can see it's quite dark here might need a lantern let's say Bob's coming in from this path he can see our other character here now, he can see the octopus, so that's one that should be hidden from him until he actually engages with that. Now, coming into here, again, we can see those myconids immediately as we come into here. I can hear the lapping of the water from there. As we approach this waterfall, so we go up the steps. That will always get me louder. Is it too loud? Actually, it's not. I don't think it is too loud at all. Not compared with the sound of the, the waves. So I also remember that we've got violet fungi up here, which is good because, uh, from the point of view of Bob can't see it. Okay, if we walk further away, jump down that cliff. Ah, look, over here, he can't see the, uh, the marker icon. But for this one, he can. So that's because we created this as a map icon only and didn't link it to a journal. So um, again, we'll need to fix that. That's not a big deal. It don't, won't take too long. We can fix that. 
to put some dripping water sounds over here. They possibly could be a little bit louder. Moving up into this chamber, we've got all of these guys. Just checking the walls and the lighting and stuff like that. We've still got his brighter area of light around him. Um, again, we need to hide the circle chamber icon. Heading up here, again, we need to hide this, but we can see these. These are not supposed to be hidden, these ones, so that's fine. You can only see him when he's in there. I thought we had another sound effect here. Let's just pop back to the DM screen. Oh look, we've got all those Sturges that are actually hidden. I forgot about those that he didn't hear. And indeed, that wasn't hidden, so we've hidden that as well. So the Sturges and things are hidden. If I go to my, uh, if I go to my sounds, yeah, look, we did. So what that tells me, that one it really isn't loud enough. Let's pop that up. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm going to pop this one up as well. Because that one was much quieter than I would like. Alright. So let's go back to uh, back to Bob. Doing those little tweaks. Quite a quiet one, but we can hear that. Let's go check this one down here again. Yep, we can hear that. That's all right. Oops, try to go through a wall again, Bob. That's a big no-no. Okay, so from here, remember we had some pillars and things. We put the purple light on. This is kind of like the end chamber. We need to hide this crystal cave. Uh, and purposely, this is not lit by the fungi like the rest of it. So they're going to need a torch or something. But you can navigate their way. A purple crystal around here. Investigate this. Now remember, the idea is that he can smash this crystal um, as part of the adventure. So as the DM, we would be able to do that. All right. So one of the things you'll notice is it doesn't show you how far he's moving at the moment. We haven't got a, um, a measure on him. The good thing is, is that everything is disappearing and going back to being hidden as he leaves. Here we've got the seashore again. Okay. So, um, oops, Just pop Bob over there. He's, ah, he can't do that because he's got to go, <laughs> he's got to walk around. You've got to walk around, Bob. You can't just swim across the ocean there, not without a boat. There we go. All right, so we can leave Bob over there. So this seems pretty good. A couple of little adjustments to make um, with regard to uh, these to back this is the DM screen of course uh, regarding the like the crystal cave icons and stuff like that a little bit of tweaking of noises and stuff uh, and we've re-hidden the octopus if you just noticed as Bob walked out he didn't see it and also these signs the sunken walkway stairs and things Bob couldn't see them so that's good I think the lighting is about right on that one um, for uh, when he's inside I quite like that that works quite well all right, so uh, what's the next one we want to look at? So we've looked at the Compass Rose, we've looked at Seagrove Caves, we've looked at the main Stormwreck Isle, we've looked at Dragon's Rest. Uh, that leaves us the Clifftop Observatory. So let's activate the Clifftop Observatory, which looks like this, and straight away, Bob can't see anything again. So when I, if I just click on these, this is taking me to the different maps as the DM. I'm left-clicking. But you can see this little B here is showing that Bob is still in the Clifftop Observatory. So I can see where the players are as the GM, what they're looking at. Um, Bob can't navigate to that. He can navigate, if I, I can navigate him off to Dragon's Rest. But he can't, he can navigate that. Sorry. <laughs> he can then go back to look at Dragon's Rest. He can go back to look at... Um, the, uh, the shipwreck isle map that I'm on at the moment and he can also go back to the clifftop observatory now the only reason he can go back to the clifftop observatory it's not on his navigation normally but this is currently the active map so if I make dragon's rest right click and go to active map uh, Bob can now only access two maps which is the stormwreck isle and Dragon's Rest, he can't go to the Clifftop Observatory because it's not active and he doesn't have navigation permission. So that's another useful thing to check. By making that active, it brings every player and the DM directly to that particular map. 
but Bob can't see anything because his character's not on there. Let's drop his character on here. Lovely jubbly. Uh, and let's see what Bob can see. Oh, gosh, right. Need to zoom right in, Bob, please. Uh, again, we've got the journal issue. Not a problem. We know about that. Um, and because of the way we did this, yes, Bob can walk straight out into the sea. There's no walls and things there. So he could walk all the way over here, uh, investigate. Um, he can jump over these walls because we didn't put them in. Uh, he can whoops, he can cheat and come across here. Obviously, they're not going to do that. That's what the DM is for, to make sure that doesn't happen. We can pop into here uh, and we can see the dragon. Now, he can't get down here. If you remember, when we go down these secret stairs, and when, when they find them, he can't move his own character over there. So the DM's going to have to do that, which is good. It stops him from being able to effectively cheat his way. We've got our monsters here in the main area. We've got our sea lapping in the background. If we come up here, we can see the rest of our um, kobolds there, etc. So this appears to all be working except for those journal entries. So pop back as the DM. In fact, uh, as the DM, one of the things I want to do is to teleport him to the cellar. And if we, whoops, wrong screen. If we drag him back over here. There we go. Now he can move around down in this cellar if he wants to. Interact with the dragon. Uh, hopefully not getting into a fight about it. Um, he can't leave. Because of those walls. Which is what we want because he's not going to just wander outside of those walls. We want the DM to have control of saying, yes, okay, you go back up the steps to the tower. There you are. You're back there. Okay, so on this one, one thing I want to check. I'm happy with the sounds. I'm happy with where he can and can't go. I want to check um, these bridges how do they look for Bob so just make this uh, full screen for you Bob can't see them at the moment because he's not there um, Bob you're stuck behind, uh, <laughs> stuck behind a book you shouldn't be able to see but if he walks out here hey look Bob can see those now ah, yeah that's good that I think that works very really well and we could choose to add a sound with that as well um, I don't think it's needed. I really, really don't. So we've created our first player. Um, we've created our first character and we've logged in as that player and claimed that character. So this is Bob. He's now actually able to play the game itself. Um, and we've checked all of our maps and things. So off camera, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all of these up so that they're all hidden from Bob. Bob can't see them. That's why we do this little play test. Um, and then I would say this is ready to go. I'm really quite chuffed with that. Uh, so if you've got any questions, if you think there's anything we haven't checked and tested that we should do, um, leave a like, um, but also leave a comment about what you would like to see, uh, how we check things, anything we've missed, etc. Uh, and then I will see you again in the next video where I think we will attempt to take Randall, Bob's character, um, potentially through a bit of combat and just see how that is going to work um, just one-on-one -on -one in Foundry VTT, um, what's the mechanics like? Because again, we don't want to use add-ons yet, um, so let's see what it's like without any add-ons, see how complicated, how much work that is for the player and for the DM to do that. Thank you for your support, follow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.